Western Protestant churches are completely failing men. They have lower church attendance than Catholicism, than Eastern Orthodox, Judaism, and there's a huge growing number of men flocking to Islam. Why? Men build things with their blood, sweat, tears, and sacrifice. Men give themselves to projects. So churches without men that are doing that for the church are going to die. There are lots of churches out there that don't recognize the need for masculine energy within their church walls. And in fact, there are a lot of them that become majority female congregations, and then they actively fight the influence of men coming in because they masculine energy is seen as less spiritual for some reason. This is the second video in this uh, two-parter kind of thing that I'm doing. The first video is about men having to be men and take responsibility at their churches and what that looks like. Basically, a willingness to be discipled, which means that the flip side of that is for churches to actually be intentional about discipling men. My church growing up was awesome. There were all kinds of different events that they held that you could invite your friends to. Uh, now, it was, you know, co-ed, so it wasn't specifically men or women or whatever, but as I was growing up there as a kid, I would invite my friends to these events all the time, and they weren't explicitly like you would show up and you wouldn't necessarily know it was a Christian event. It was just ways to get to know people, and so they did that very well, and then they also did discipling and teaching uh, events where you would show up and they would start asking difficult questions. And then they, they would also give you leadership roles and responsibilities um, to run some of these events. And I think that's a very successful blueprint or a way to think about discipleship within the church. I know a lot of pastors and elders and people in church leadership positions, they've already got a lot on their plate trying to minister to people. But the thing about discipleship is that if you do it right, then it's actually not that big of a burden. And Jesus gives us a perfect example of this by calling the disciples and sending them out. So there are three main ways that you can change what your church is doing to really encourage discipleship in men and to get men more involved in attending your church. Number one, give them ways to plug in and give them lots of ways to plug in. Number two, give them real answers and tools for the problems they're facing. And last but not least, give them responsibility. So number one is give men lots of ways to plug in. And this is uh, for many reasons, but men today are super busy. Like they're trying to take on the entire world and especially younger people have very hectic schedules because they haven't disciplined themselves to live in God's rhythm. That's part of what they need help with is finding healthy balances between technology and work and relationships and all the different things that they're doing. So men's schedules are often all over the place. And if they don't have a, an opportunity to come when they're available at first, then that's going to be very discouraging for them to feel like they're missing out on all the different events. Men need to build community. And especially now, face-to-face -face community is so important. Actual fellowship. And I think that's something the church can offer men. They need a place where they feel like they can talk about real stuff. And that's not just co-workers at lunch, or what they actually crave is a multi-generational discipleship program. They're really hungry for this, and they're also really hungry for actual spiritual nourishment. So I'll caveat this by saying that every church can't be everything to every man in your community, but you should really strive to offer many different ways and different events and different programs at, at different uh, nights of the week for men to come and get connected to not just Sunday morning. Number two is give men real answers and tools to deal with the problems they're facing. This is why Joe Rogan, Jordan Peterson, Brett Weinstein, I can, I can go on, Andrew Huberman, all these guys that are popular, even Andrew Tate. I'm sick of all these guys having such an edge when it comes to giving Christian men tools. Um, Jordan Peterson is one that he gives men tools to deal with the real issues that they're facing in life. If we're doing step one right, then we'll get men to come to these events. But then once they're at some of these uh, events, then we want to be able to give them actual answers. And that's what discipleship is. Jesus was giving the disciples actual answers and actual instruction on how to live life better. 
Men are really sick of being coddled and having things done for them. They want to be challenged, and this overly feminized culture is coddling men and rejecting their contributions. So you actually want to bring them in and show them that they're allowed to voice an opinion, and, they're, and it can be wrong even, and that it's going to be met with respect and dignity and and reproach when needed. Uh, angry young men need reproach sometimes, but they're not going to respect that unless you're building the relationship with them and giving them tool sets and knowledge and explaining why we believe what we believe. It's not acting any different from the world to give them shallow tools or shallow, like they want that depth and community and discipleship opportunity. Number three, I think, is the special sauce. Give them responsibility. As you're building men up in the church, if you are inviting men, there are going to be lots of men that are just a little bit further down the road than they are. And it's okay to train those men on how to disciple the new guys coming in. In fact, that is discipleship. If you're being properly discipled, then you should always be in the middle of where you're at. You should always have people discipling you and guiding you on what's the next step. And you should also have people that you're able to then serve and pour into. Once you get to this point, inviting men to have a passion, whether it's sports or music or whatever it is, and taking a night a week and offering men an opportunity to hang out, that's hospitality, right? And that's something that women are much better at than men, but we can do fun events, like putting men in charge of having a fun event for people to come to. That's a low key way for them to, to get experience leading other men and discipling other men. And I call that the special sauce because then they're taking a step back and they're serving, they're pouring out into others. They're not just being a spiritual glutton, but they're pouring out into others. And you can be intentional and delegate responsibility here so that it doesn't become overwhelming for a few special guys that are leaders within the church. Uh, you can actually spread the burden out and other people can take that up. I don't really want to crap on churches right now or crap on... Uh, you know, just crap on the idea that people aren't taking responsibility or whatever. That's not my intent, but we do need to take responsibility. We need men to take responsibility, and we need churches to take the initiative to actually disciple men, just like Jesus gave us an example of.